Welcome friends. This is Gary, the Tree Whisperer Walker. You can always find me on the World Wide Web at a place called GaryWalkerOnline.com. Now I'm standing in front of my very favorite, one of my very favorite series called the Music Series. So being a lifelong musician myself, uh, this was an absolute joy. In fact, it's kind of like that saying, you know, falling off a log or it's like <laughs> ringing a bell. Well, that's how this one was for me. It was easy for me to pour my heart, my mind, my intellect, and my creativity into this particular series. Now, the piece behind me is fairly complicated. It has several layers of spiritual and intellectual meaning, and it's all connected. And I have what I call the three eyes that I coined them through all my studies throughout my life. The three eyes would be this, and that is that everything in the micro and the macro level is interconnected, interdependent, and interrelated. So everything in this piece, and actually in totality and in principle, almost all of my pieces are interconnected, interdependent, and interrelated. So let's get into the bones of this particular piece here. So I'm going to play the professor here, and we are going to talk about some of the aspects of this piece here. Now, so you're going to notice there are numerous faces throughout this canvas. Over on this side, you're also going to notice that there's hands everywhere. I don't know why most of my paintings are what I call a subconscious leak. So when we work as creative people, whether we're musicians, painters, dancers, whatever, if we're being true to the moment and true to our inspiration, whatever we're feeling inside has to come out. There's no question about it. So again, sometimes I don't even know why this stuff comes out or even what it means. But so I look at it later and I try to learn as if I didn't even paint the piece. So anyway, so we got a lot of hands and you can actually see their eyes in the hands. So the hand could be a symbol. If you look at, you study cultures throughout time and with the Native Americans, it was how. It's, it's usually a gesture of kindness, you know, as long as it's not done in some type of a form that suggests aggression or anger. Uh, it could also have spiritual import in that the painter or the musician is asking for divine help or spiritual help. So I find that I have a lot of hands in this one and they have eyes. So you figure it out. You probably know more than I do. Uh, but the central part of this is an instrument. It's the guitar and the acoustic hole is the yin yang symbol. So again, all music uh, is really a combination, I believe, of the masculine and feminine qualities when we're emoting and expressing ourselves true to form to who and what we think we are at that particular moment. So, but even more interesting is the cross on here uh, and with a person on there with a crown of thorns. So not making any particular reference to some historical event that happened uh, two millennia ago, uh, this really symbolizes for me the crucifixion that every creative person has to go through when we have to subvert and subsume our personal ego in order to express that which we feel is universal and archetypal. In other words, being, uh, as Shakespeare said, to thine own self be true. Or as Jesus said in the Bible, where your heart is, there will your treasure be. So this is the crucifixion in order to get to the deeper elements, to the, to the gold mine of pure creativity. We have to kind of crucify ourselves. We have to put our personal issues on the back burner. And so this particular piece, we have a piano over here. That's a grand piano over here. We have this, what we would call spirit, or in the parlance or language of the great writings, the texts of the world, called pneuma. Uh, which would be the Latin word for breath, and when they say somebody breathed his last breath, that is the spirit, or what we commonly call the soul of the person. And so in this particular case, these people, you can see there's uh, this going on here. Now, I like to do things where I have faces within faces, so a lot of times I've had people who have bought my paintings, and they told me a year later, they're ringing me up, bing, bing, hello, I just found something in this painting that I didn't see you know, a year ago. Anyway, so I've got a couple faces stacked on faces here. Obviously, this woman is the star of the show. Her breath or spirit is arching all the way over to this person. So they have an in and an out. They have an exchange going on. And I can't get into all of the myriad complexities of this particular piece, but trust me, go to my website, garywalkeronline.com, 
and then you can work with this piece and you can find for yourself. I like to call them creative Rubik's cubes. They're like puzzles within puzzles, fractals, iterations, boxes within boxes within boxes. That's the way our life is. That's the way it unfolds. So anyway, so you've got all these, you'll, you'll find them later. They're just a lot of fun. So it's an interesting, fun piece. Uh, then I've got some geometry up here, some geometrics. So I've got a really nice combination of what I call classic Euclidean geometry uh, with right angles and oblique angles along with a lot of curvilinear. So the curvilinear along with the geometric angles creates the tension. And good art should have some tension in it, not just visually or color-wise, uh, because if we look at all paintings, it's form, color, and texture. So this piece doesn't have a whole lot of texture, but it's got a lot of lines that are creating a lot of tension. And uh, well, um, well, we'll just leave the rest to you know, the viewer. Hope you enjoy it. Gary Walker online, see you on the other side.